Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the WTV Live Network at Warrior Field at Westside High School. We got what could be considered a top 10 matchup here, Hunter. P number three, Papio La Vista, the Monarchs, coming into Westside High School to take on the Westside Warriors, who just picked up a huge win last night against Bellevue West to kind of get off of a bad skid. They were on a three or four game losing streak coming into last night when they played the Thunderbirds in Bellevue West but they went in with a strong showing, and you're kind of hoping if your coach Shields and the rest of the West Side Warriors that, that can get you off the skid that they were on and continue their momentum into the number three team in the state. Yeah, West Side hasn't been off to the start they wanted so far. Nine and seven was on a three-game skid before that big win, 12-9 against Bell West. Overall, they are not a bad team. They could be considered top ten, but have blown a couple of games, played some really good opponents. Their main game that they lost was Lincoln South, Lincoln East, the number one team in the state. They won them by, beat them by, or lost to them by two, and then fell again to Elkhorn South. But overall, this team's good. They can play tough, and if they can get their pitch, if they can limit the walks, limit, limit the hard hits, I think they'll be a pretty solid game out here today. You know, when I talked to Coach Seals just last week, he said they could have such a better record, and they're such a more be a better team than what their record shows. And he credited that to the lack of strikes they were throwing. He said early in the season they were giving up too many free bases by throwing too many balls, letting too many walks happen, and that just put them into bad situations. But I've noticed the pitching has started to pick it up, and even if you ask Coach Shields, he's a lot better where they are now pitching-wise. He's a lot more proud with the players, how they're playing, especially at the mound. You know, they're playing a lot better. And on the mound today for Westside will be Harry Yeager, just a junior, like most of this Westside team, juniors, sophomores, even a couple freshmen, Harry, he's 0-0, has not made a start yet, but he has appeared in three games, only two innings pitched, so he has doesn't have a ton of experience on the mound this season. But if he, get, he gets going, he can be good. But what scares me, Hunter, is that strikeout-to-walk ratio. Only three strikeouts to his six walks, so a one-to-two ratio. If he allows too many free bases, it might be in a bad situation. I think what Jaeger needs is with his strikeout to walk ratio, it's not good, as you just said. But I think for him to be good today, they need to limit, need to have soft contact on the infield. They have a really great infield here today. But overall, his last his last appearance, I believe, was against Elkhorn, if I'm, do not, if I'm not mistaken. But he needs to limit the contact, get weak ground outs, and limit the walks. That's exactly right, Hunter. The infield on this West Side team is really good couple senior Charlie Henningsen at short, Nikolai French at South Dakota State commit going to play baseball in a couple years at third, Lewis Hoffert playing first today, and then Marcus Chandler, who's really just had a heck of a season hunter over at second. I want to talk about Marcus Chandler for a minute, though. Just a freshman on this West Side team, and he's already up towards the top in batting average. He's having a heck of a season in the batter's box. He's having a heck of a season on defense, not committing errors, doing his job, at whether that's short or at second. And even on the mound, Hunter, last night you said he went in and he closed against Bellevue West, a top three team in the state, which is probably why he's not starting today. But he's just had a heck of a season as just a freshman. Yeah, I got to talk with him a little bit earlier today. He, he's been proud about the start of the season for him, and I, and I believe the West Side team can sense it too. The, he is a heck of a player. On the mound, he can throw up to high 80s, but probably more in that mid-80s, have a devastating slider. And overall, he he can pitch hard. He has to limit the walks, though. But overall, he is a great freshman, best player I've ever seen on varsity. That is exactly right, Hunter. He's got a really bright career ahead of him. And if we take a look on the other side at Papio La Vista, they will be tossing Trevor Antoniak, who has a 1-0 record on the season in just two appearances. But he does have eight innings pitch, so he has that experience on the mound and a really good strikeout-to-walk ratio, Hunter, 13-3. to He's The West Side offense and batters got their hands full tonight. Yeah, I'm kind of scared about this pitcher. Antoniak, from his stats on here, looking real good. One, one hit over eight innings. That is something a major leaguer barely could do. But 13 strikeouts to three walks, that's the stat I'm probably – it's probably the scariest. Going to be a tough, tough. What am I going to say? The t like a tough assignment for the for the West Side hitters. But if he can, if they can get on him early, it 
that's probably their best chance to beat this 10-2 and two Monarch team. We got great weather out here tonight at Warrior Field. 66 degrees, feels like 74. Little to no wind right now either, Hunter. If you take a look at the flag behind me, maybe a couple mile an hour breeze blowing in from left field. And big Paul Bark here too at Westside High School, 335 into the corners and 360 dead center with a high fence. So you don't see a lot of home runs here, hit, hit here, and then we got no wind. It's going to be a game of which defense can play better, and that west side infield is really good, but so is Papio, obviously why they're number three, in the three team in the state. And just like you said, both of these pitchers, they need weak contact. Anything hit hard, even if it doesn't get in the outfield, we all know hard contact can be dangerous. Overall, I think these well, teams are really similar, except probably one side needs to limit the walks more than usual. But I believe they can get, if they can limit the walks, they should be able to do good today. We're going to take a quick break here on the WTV Live Network for the National Anthem, and we'll be right back for the start of the first inning. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. Hunter Velopec alongside me. I'm Zach Kastrick, and we're just a few moments away from what could can be considered a top 10 matchup, Hunter. You could argue with the people making the rankings that Westside should be in the top 10, borderline top 10 team, and Papio La Vista, number three team in the state. Westside's got their hands full, especially coming off a top three win last night against Bellevue West. Yeah, Westside has played great in the game against Bell West. Have another tough top three matchup here against the Monarchs. I'd say if they win this game, they're probably going to be ranked probably 10 or 9, maybe even 8. But Westside's played some really solid teams this year. I think they've played maybe 3, 4, maybe even 5 top 10 teams through their young season. That, that stretch that we just talked about, that three-game skid before the Bellevue West game, Lincoln East was in there, the top 10 top team in the state, and a couple other good teams there like Elkhorn South, who Westside ultimately lost to. But that Bellevue West game was such a huge confidence booster for this team and Coach Seals. Like I went down and grabbed the lineup from Coach Seals and he was super excited about the game last night. We talked about it for a little bit and he says it's a big confidence booster. Like you know that's a top three team in the state. This is a top three, top three team in the state as well in Papio La Vista. That just proves to that team that they can beat this Monarchs team after they beat what is considered by the rankings a better Bellevue West team. Yeah, they played they played great in those top five games against top seeded Lincoln East and Elkhorn South. Gave up only five runs in those games. Their offense just couldn't get going in neither of them. Scored no runs, shut out both times, but played overall really great on the defensive side and in the and on the pitching mound. So I'm excited to see what West I can do today on the mound and in the field and see if they can get their hitting going. Jaeger is on the mound like we talked about. Harry Jaeger making his first start of the season. And to lead things off for the Monarchs will be Isaac Pameran. He's out in center today and followed up by Ethan Snyder and Tanner Apgar in the three hole later this inning. Hager will come set for the first pitch of the game here at Westside. First one is fouled off the leg of Pameran. Good start if you're Coach Seals. You want to see those strikes coming off the arm of Harry Yeager. Especially those first pitch strikes. Those are the mo most important pitch always is the first pitch. 
about 100 plus batting average from an 01 count to a 10 count. And if he can get him down 02 early, big big start here for the Warriors. Try to get out of this first inning. The 01 pitch from Jaeger, outside and high, ball one. The 1-1 one, one pitch from Jaeger. Little low into the dish. Behind the home plate is Lewis Hoffert, a junior on this west side team, catching for the Warriors. That pitch is hit down Whoa. to Chandler at second. Good play from him. Diving stop to throw out Pameran. We were just talking about him in the pregame. He He's a good defensive player as he shows off the leather there and makes a nice sliding stop against the lefty second, second and get him out, Eastern get out the fast lead off hitter. That just really shows how good he is over there at second. And now up to the plate is Easton Schneider for the Monarchs. First pitch from Jaeger bounces off home plate, ball one. Just what I said earlier, just get, a, get as much ahead in the count as possible. If you fall back, battle back. Schneider will be a lefty with the righty Jaeger on the mound. That one's high and outside. S second ball. One one pitch from Jaeger to Schneider. L little low, but it catches the knees. Called strike two. Infield back, except for third base over there. Nikolai French as he takes a few steps back, though. The one-two pitch from Jaeger. Soft contact over to shortstop. Over to first in time. Good play by Charlie Henningsen over at short to retire Easton Schneider. And now up to the plate is Tanner Apgar. That is a good play by the shortstop, Henningsen. Charge the ball, make the nice Third throw, the baseman, make sure it doesn't get past him. But that's what, but that's what Jaeger needs today. Weak contact. He got, he got a little bit of a tough one there on, on that first batter. Nice play by Chandler, but of course that weak contact on the second batter. First pitch from Jaeger catches the outside corner for strike one. Good start from Jaeger, pumping those strikes down the middle. Not a lot of looks for the early Monarch hitters. 0-1 pitch, a little outside, ball one. The 1-1 pitch from Jaeger to Apgar. Swing and a miss. Little check swing, gets him to go. 1-2 now. Looks like a nice change up there by Jaeger. Got it right where he wanted to, down and low in the way from the hitter, down in the zone. Perfect pitch to get him checked. One, two pitch to Apgar. Outside, good frame job by Savoy behind the dish. Two, two now. Jaeger's two, two pitch. Outside and down, so it'll be a full count now. Two Tanner Apgar, three, two. Full count pitch from Jaeger to Apgar. Come set. It's a little inside, but we're going to get a foul tip and we'll do it all over again. Another good pitch kind of on in on the hands there, Hunter. Just four sweet contact. We just we keep saying it over and over again. That's the way Jaeger's going to probably, main way Jaeger's going to get out. He doesn't strike out a lot of people. Gives two walks to one strikeout. Six Six walks on the year so far, but. Full count didn't. pitch is fouled back and out of play. Now we'll have the third full count pitch. And that's off the press box. <laughs> we'll get the third, third count, full count pitch to Apgar. Swing and a miss. Goes in the dirt. Savoy will toss it over to first to end the inning. Way to battle. No hits, no runs. 
No runners left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the first. West Side's one, two, three will do will be due up when we come back here on the WTV Live Network. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. West side with a clean top of the first. Three up, three down. And now West side will step into the batter's box. Leading it off will be Charlie Henningsen over at short today. On the mound is Tanner Apgar. Leading out for the Warriors with shortstop number five. Antoniak on the mound. Had a good season for himself so far today. This year, Hunter, as well. With a zero ERA, eight innings pitch, only one hit allowed. West side's got their hands full. Yeah, this guy's Charlie Hanningson to start. Yeah, this guy's a good pitcher. He he overpowers the hitters for those 13 strikeouts. So Westside just probably needs to get on top of the ball, maybe maybe have a keen eye today. He only has three walks on the season, which is surprising with his 13 strikeouts. But Antoniak's second pitch down the middle for strike one. Count 1-1 one, one to Charlie Hanningson. Would be, a, would be an interesting way to see how Westside approaches the pow power of the lefty. Antoniak. High and outside, ball two. Two one, fouled backwards and out of play down the right field line. Two two now to Henningsen. Two two pitch outside, ball three, full count. The full count pitch from Antoniak to Henningsen. Down the gut, and it's going to be fouled backwards down that right field line once again. Way to keep battling here by Henningsen, swinging at the good pitches right on the corner of the zone. He's try trying to – Antoniak trying to dot him up, but he is – he forces the walk there as that was a good plate appearance there by the shortstop. Charlie Henningsen draws a walk to lead things off for the Warriors. Now the South Dakota State commit, Nicola French will step into the batter's box. He's one heck of a player, Hunter. Indeed he is. Big power bat here, could could get one sharp down the line, maybe hit one for power, dead center field. He can do it all basically in a big defensive third baseman over at the hot corner. A lot of speed as well over on the pads with Charlie Henningsen over at first. So Antoniak's gotta be careful as his first pitch misses high for ball one. Anything, Henningsen already has three stolen bases on the year. And that pitch is going to be fouled down the right field line. We're going to see a lot of that today with the lefty on the mound. Cole French, one of the best batting averages, 327 on the year with, with about 17 hits and 10 runs with nine batted in. And Antoniak will toss it over back to first to Apgar. Got to keep a close eye on Henningsen over there and first. Henningsen takes his lead at first. Antoniak gets set, checks back, delivers the pitch down the right field line, but hooking foul towards the fence. 1 2 now on French. I think Antoniak here is going to try to mix up the timing here. Quick pitch, quick pitch French on that one. And interesting to see here what he does if he takes a long wind up or just goes in. Goes in head first with the slide step. Apgar looks in for the sign. Henningsen has his lead. He's going to toss it back once again. 
This isn't the MLB, so he could sit there and he could throw a back and forth with the first baseman, Apgar, all he wants all day. But French will wait in the batter's box for the one-two pitch. And he won't get it. And they got Henningsen in a run down over to second. And he's going to be tagged out with plenty of time. Good pickoff move by Antoniak on the mound. I was just about to say, this shows how Henningsen is a big threat on the base pad. Picked him off three times in that at bat, but eventually gets the better of him. Got him, got him stealing on the pickoff move and one, an early one out. French still in the box. That one's going to be hit dead to center, going into the gap, coming over his Pearman, and he'll make the catch. Good first swing, though, by French, getting good contact over into the right field gap, but Pameran ultimately comes over for that catch. Always good to get that first big contact on your first at bat. Gives you some confidence going into those next two against the same, if the same pitcher stays in. Just gives you some more confidence so that you can hit them. Now the speedy center fielder, Jack Scholes, will step into the mound. First pitch, a little low for ball one. Scholes just under three, 295 here, just under 300. 13 hits, 8 eight RBIs, four, four doubles on the air. So he can be a double threat. Even if that ball just gets a little blooper out into left or right, he, his speed can make it into a double. That pitch by Antoniak barely off the plate for ball two to Jack Schultz. He's also tied second for most stolen bases on the team with seven. So they let him get on the base pad. He may wreak some havoc. That one catches the outside corner this time for strike two. Evens the count at 2-2. Two, two. The pitch by Antoniak to Scholes, high, four ball three, and we'll get a full count. I like how Westside's working the pitch count. Gotten two full counts, gotten two full counts here already through the first three batters. That one is going to be fouled straight back into the net. We'll get another full count pitch to Scholes. They're just work. They're just working up Antoniak's pitch count, which might take him out earlier than Papio wants, just to conserve his arm. Full count pitch to Scholes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Papio retires the side with a one-two-three inning, unorthodox, with one hit, no errors, and no runners left on base. We'll head to the top of the second with Papio up to bat when we come back. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. We got the top of the second inning up for the Monarchs. 4 5 6 2 up Ingram, Emig, Lavicki for the Monarchs. Leading off is Alex, or is Parker Ingram. Check that, sorry. And Harry Yeager back out for a second inning of work. Yeager to lead off the top of the second. Outside, barely misses the corner of the plate for ball one. The 1-0 pitch from Jaeger, straight down the gut, strike one. Busy day here at Westside High School. We got a tennis match, baseball, reserve later as well, and even a JV track meet going on in the background on the football field. That pitch is down the right left field line, and it's going to be called foul. Almost got that one to carry down the line in the left. Nice swing there. Just got enough on it. Just, just barely pulled it foul. Well, I've gone by the third... Might have gone by French if if it was fair, but one and two now on the Papio hitter. One two pitch from Jaeger. Off the end of the bat into center. 
and he'll lead off the inning with a single as Parker Ingram gets on base. First hit of the ball game. It's always a good one. Got, got one over the plate just to, just outside. Put his bat out there. Got, got a nice piece of it. Pulled it in the center field. And a good start for the Monarchs as they need, need as many runs as possible for today. Alex Emig over at short, up to bat now. With a runner on first, Parker Ingram. The righty Jaeger will check over the pitch, squaring to bunt, but gets behind the catcher Savoy and jogging down to second is Parker Ingram. So a wild pitch by Jaeger. And now they really could bunt if they wanted Henner. He squared up to bunt there. But now with a guy on second, they can move him over to third. Yeah, I, li I like the approach here with Papio did. with Maybe he would have pulled back, but I like the bunt strategy. I like to call it Heller Ball. Shout out to U of I. Lays down the bunt. Jaeger will field it over to first in time. The sacrifice bunt is laid down perfectly to move Ingram over to third. And that's a perfect sacrifice bunt. Just get enough there. You don't, need, you don't even need to beat it out. Just get it enough. That they can't get the force out, get the tag out at third, but six the lineup for the it will Monarchs. be. Left number five. Trent Levicki up Levicki. now in left field. Chance to drive in a run with a runner on third, only one out. Harry Yeager in some early damage, or early damage control. Yeager almost hits Levicki there in the righty's batter's box for ball one. Jaeger just avoiding, looking to avoid a bad inning with a runner on third, only one out. Look, Vicky in the batter's box, swing and a miss for strike one. Yeah, well, Vicky was swinging like he was going for the fences. He just needs to probably get a deep enough fly ball into outfield or just get a slow roller to one of the infielders, probably a shortstop or a second baseman to get so they can't get. Jaeger's 1-1 one, one pitch is low and outside for ball two. So they can't get Ingram out at home. Now 2-1. Runner on third is Emig. Pitch. Fouled off into the back of the net. 2-2 two, two now. Sending's probably going to be decided on this pitch. Strike, get, get out of it. Two outs. Infield plays back. Maybe ball get into full count. Probably have to. You're gonna need to throw one in the strike zone to avoid a walk. Jaeger's two-two pitch, straight down the gut, strike three, and the Vicky will slowly walk back to the first base dugout with a sigh on his face. Can't believe that one. Honestly, it was a good pitch from our angle. Just got, buckled him up at the knees, and a perfect pitch there to try to. Rather force a ground ball and not get that high fly, but now two outs, infield can play back, get that force out at first, get, and Jaeger can get out of this inning, no runs. That pitch is in the dirt. Savoy chasing it down. The runner's going to come in and score on the pitch in the dirt from Harry Jaeger, and the Monarchs up 1 0 early. And that is not what you want to see from Jaeger. Two wild pitches with Ingram on the base pads. Had a pullback bunt that forced that. Got him to second base, sack one to third, and a bad wild pitch that brought him home. Not a, not a good start for Westside, but they could probably get a run back. Oh. That pitch into deep center, left field gap. Burke Brown going back, can't come up with it. It bounces off the wall, and jogging into second with an easy double is Caden Sterling. Just got a little bit too much of the play. Got an, put the barrel on it, put it about 330, 340 into that left center gap. Right Brown just couldn't, couldn't see it in the sun, put his glove out, couldn't grab it, and a runner back in scoring position for the Monarchs. And now the eight hole header, Brett Holscher is up to bat. With a runner on second, Jaeger in some more sticky situations. Don't wanna give up a second early run. And now an in on the hands of the hitter, over to first in time to retire the side, but that's one run on two hits and one runner left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the second after Jaeger gives up a run on a wild pitch.
Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. We're in the bottom of the second. Westside due up to bat. Anorak back for his second inning of work after Pappy La Vista puts one on the board with a couple of wild pitches from Harry Yeager. And all of a sudden, they're up one nothing. Yeah, if Westside needs to get back in this, they probably need to get base runners now and often. They got the middle of the order, Anglum, Chandler, Savori. And it should be a they can get on base here, it would be huge. Anglum in the cleanup. First pitch way outside, ball one. Anglum, the only hitter on this West Side team to have a home run this year. Only one, but it was a good one. Hitting hitting only 184 just below the Mendoza line. Seven hits, eight runs, two RBIs, and a before mentioned homer. That pitch is also outside for ball two from Anorak. Anglum up early, two nothing in the count. 2-0 pitch. Fouled straight back, coming for our eyes, Hunter, for strike one. I always like to joke that we have a net because it's so important because otherwise our head would have been gone that time. Probably. Unless if they get a good, unless if get, get a good arc that hits our window here, I don't think anything's going to be coming at us. Hard hack from Nick Anglum on that 2-1 pitch, and now it's 2-2. Two -two. That's the pitch that embodies Antoniak, just overpower, the lefty that overpowered. Kind of reminds me right now of like Randy Johnson and a role to Chapman that just overpowers hitters and gets them to take big hacks, big misses, and gets a lot of strikeouts. Full count now for Anglum. 3-2 Antoniak's pitch outside, and Nick Anglum draws a walk to lead off the bottom of the second. Good at bat there by Anglum, getting this to a full count. Got a high pitch. High pitch, Antonia tried to climb the ladder, did not work. And now it'll be Marcus, Marcus the freshman Marcus Chandler up. Heck of a season so far, Hunter. Yeah, three, 381, 361 with 13 hits in 36 plate appearances. And has the t most RBIs on the team with tied with Burke Brown and Nicola French with nine. That pitch at the belt for strike one, 0-1. Oh one. That pitch is in on the hands, almost hit him for ball one. Nick Anglum, not the fastest of the guys, but definitely capable of stealing a few bases over at first. A little scared, though, if your coach seals to give him that sign after Henningsen got picked off in the first. The 1-1 pitch from Anorak. Little inside and low for ball number two. I think Westside just needs here. Probably Chandler just get a rather a walk or even a... Hit, maybe even a walk, just get that, get angle him to second and try to. And on the hands and turn down the left field line foul, evens up the count at 2-2. Two, two. Get a runner in scoring position, put some pressure on Antoni Acto, throw strikes. The 2-2 two, two count to Marcus Chandler, the freshman. Angle him on first, that one's low in the dirt, good stop in the back by Tanton. Saved a free base there by Anglum, trotting over to second. Good dig. We have another full count. Westside hitters have been putting Antoniak in a bunch of full counts today. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good pitch by Antoniak. Got him to climb the ladder there. Chandler down on strikes, and we have ourselves the first out of the inning. It was a great pitch. Up on the numbers, got him looking. Count swinging. Yeah, great pitch up on the numbers. Completely blew it by him. Now Trey Savoy, who'll be catching the rest of the game. That one in on the hands, fouled straight back and out of play. Savoy has another great batting average, 324, and has 11 hits over 34 play appearances, 7 RBIs. Can't get... Can't get a ball into the gap and has some speed. Has a double and a triple on the year. Anorax pitch, the 0-1. And it's going to be tossed over back to first, keeping a close eye on Nick Anglin. Nick Anglin, three or four step lead off first. Lefty, easy to pick players off if you're not careful. And that one catches the corner for strike two. And now Savoy's in a deep hole. Yeah, Savoy's probably just going to need to battle battle it off. Keep just keep the bat in check there if it, to pre anything outside the zone, but just battle like that. 
Good diving stop off the end of the glove over to first, can't toss it. So it, gonna be, I imagine, what we'll call a hit. Yep. Tough play over there for Schneider over at second. It was not a bad play. He got the diving stop, but just could not field it with his glove. And it looks like we will have a courtesy runner. It will be Brandon Hosey going to be the going to be the courtesy runner for Big West Side at first. Number ten, Brayden Hosey. Brayden Hosey, a lot more speed over there for Savoy, who's catching. Gives him time to also put gear on. Get ready for the set next inning. So Hosey with a fairly big lead with the first baseman off the bag. Yeah, Hosey has four stolen bases on here. Really can't steal a base right now with Anglem at second, but could be some threats on the base pads. If now Burke Brown in the box. Burke had a really slow start to the season, Hunter, but really he's picked it up these last three or four games. Yeah, he could, if he can hit one into the gap here, he might be able to get – get a two-run double or a two-run triple here with speed of Hosey and Anglum. Combined 13 stolen bases on the year for them. Burke Brown is really the type of guy that just sits on that pitch he wants, and if he doesn't like it, he's not going to swing, so he draws a good amount of walks. He's up 2-0 already. Right now, he is hitting 400 with eight hits on the year. 2-0 pitch, runners go, in on the hands, foul back, the hit and run was on there. I think they probably – it was a good idea by Coach Seals to get a hit and run on, but they would have easily made it if he swung on and missed or just held back. That was a 2-0 pitch. Good idea by Coach Seals. Now 2-1 after the foul ball. Brown waits for the pitch from Antoniak. Runners get their leads. The pitch. Swing and a miss straight down the gut from Antoniak for strike two. Even count for Burke Brown at the plate. Waits for the pitch from Antoniak. He's set, and he'll deliver. Fouled straight back towards the press box off the net. 2-2 two -two still. Keep a battle in here by Brown. Just going to try to try to get some weak contact, get some pitches off, try to force a walk, see if they can get the bases loaded here with only one out. Antoniak's 2-2 pitch to Brown. Runners will go. Swing on. Strikes out. Oh, Burke Brown away. into left field. A runner will come on to score. Oh, the windmill Hosey. is on. Hosey coming into the home. Oh, the play at the plate. Oh, In time. Oh! And it's Hosey. They got him. What a throw. Hosey cannot believe it. What a throw in left field by Levicki. And Coach Seals doesn't like it. Hosey jumped up in disgust on that call. He thought he was safe. Oh, man. But ultimately, he's called out at the plate. What a throw to prevent another run by the Westside Warriors. That one was a great throw by Levicki. Nabbed the leading run. Either way, Anglum will score, get to his 10th stolen base on the year. But what a throw. Perfectly on the line, perfect on the dot, and able to nab Hosey before he could score. I thought he was safe. But I guess the umpire didn't see it. The that was a bang-bang play, Hunter. Ultimately, the two hits results in one run for the Westside Warriors. No left on base, though, after Hosey gets tossed out at home. And we'll head to the bottom of the top of the third when we come back on the WTV Live Network. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. We're in the top of the third. Westside put up one run with their two hits last inning, and a bold decision by Coach Seals to send Braden Hosey home results in an out at the plate, the third out of that inning. And now we're in the top of the third. 
Bottom of the order, Tanton will start the inning off, and then 1-2 follow Pameran and Schneider. That pitch goes in for a strike for Jaeger. The 0-1 pitch from Jaeger to Tanton. Catches the outside corner, called strike, 0-2. Good pitch here to get that count to 0-2. Tanton, 125 on the year. Not a great start for him so far. Two hits through 16 at bats. He's behind the dish on defense for the Monarchs. Help make that great play. Swung on, three-pitch strike for Harry Jaeger. And he retires the lead-off batter in the top of the third. Another great pitch there by Jaeger. Just, just climbed the ladder and got the strikeout. Number five on the year for him. Just trying to get that strikeout to walk ratio back up as the leadoff hitter Pameran will come back to the dish. Pameran grounded out to second in his first at bat. That one's going to catch the left corner of the plate for a strike. Harry Jaeger doing a great job of painting the corners early in this game, Hunter. If the, if the umpire's going to call it, just throw it there. And he's been getting... He's getting all the calls out on that on that outside corner. Jaeger's 0-1 pitch. Check swing. Still going to be called a strike. 0-2. Ahead in the count is Jaeger. It's very good to get in ahead of the count, especially against this Monarchs team. And Pamarant hitting 333 on the year. Tied for the most hits on the team with 12. The 0-2 pitch from Jaeger to Pameran. Sharp liner over to Hofford at first. And he's going to beat him out for the second out of the inning. It's like Hoffer was a bit indecisive there at first base, trying to see if he was going to have to run to the bag or toss it over to Jaeger. Eventually made the decision just in the nick of time as he got, just got the out. Now Easton Schneider comes up to the plate. He grounded out to short in the first inning. Jaeger with a great early start in this inning. Fairly low pitch count as well. In just the third inning. First pitch, check swing, makes contact, fouls it towards the first base dugout. That's all you want right now if you're Coach Seal is just keep that pitch count low, force some weak contact, maybe a few swing and misses, limit the walks. Already deeper in their bullpen than they wanted, like you said, Hunter, having to play Marcus Chandler to close out last night, who I ultimately would think it'd be available later tonight if they need a closer. Marcus may be the guy. Yeah, probably, but right now this they need to focus on this hitter right now. Schneider's hitting 407 on the year already, 11 for 27. That one low, ball and two, 2-1 two, now. In his at-bats, the best best hitter on, by average on the team by it's actually second best average, but most hits and five ba RBIs through 36 plate appearances. That pitch straight over too short. As Henningsen comes on to make the grab, no hits, no runs, no runners left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the third when we come back. 2-1. Welcome into the WTV Live Network. We got the bottom of the third coming up for you now. West side's got eight, nine, and one due up in this inning. West side right now doing about as good as of a start as they could get other on the defensive and the pitching end. Jaeger keeping his pitch count down, keep it, keeping the Monarchs to weak contact through two innings. And the reason they got that run up attack on the board the lineup, is those off. two wild pitches that kind of killed them. Pitcher, number eight, Harry and speaking of Harry Yeager, he is up. 
Jaeger the eight hole hitter. Anorak back on the mound. First pitch, little low, called ball. Second pitch fouled straight back into the net. Strike one. The 1-1 one -one pitch from Anorak to Jaeger swung on a missed for strike two. The 1-2 pitch to Jaeger way outside doesn't even come up with a catch. 2-2 two -two count now. Anorak's 2-2 two -two pitch to Jaeger. Outside ball three, Jaeger forces the full count. Anorak really just getting his pitch count drove up by these Warrior hitters. Yeah, they're being kind of nimble right now, not swinging at what he is offering. He's trying to climb the ladder, get, get him to swing at those high fastballs. But eventually, we'll rather strike him out, give up a hit, or in this case, give him a walk. Good at bat from Harry Yeager to battle back to draw the walk. And now the flip over hitter, the nine hole hitter, Lewis Hoffer is due up. Runner on first is Yeager, got a little bit of speed. First pitch at the waistline for strike one. Harry Yeager gets his lead over at first. Anorak will come set, and he'll deliver to Lewis Hoffert. Swung on, fouled down the right field line, way out of play. Anorak comes set to deliver the pitch. Checks back on the runner at first. The pitch, once again, right field line out of play. Westside is doing a good job. I keep battling foul. I can't count how many foul balls they've hit. They've hit a lot off of Antoniak, but driving up his pitch count probably can get him off the mound by the fifth inning. Pitch to get Hoffer. Into center, coming over is Pameran. Can he get there? And it's going to... Oh! They're going to get a diving catch. What a catch by Pameran over in center. Yeah, indeed. What a catch. Covered probably nearly 100 feet of ground there. Maybe, maybe 50 to 100 feet there. But made a spectacular catch to save an extra base hit from Hoffer. And keep... And keep Yeager over there at first base before the top of the lineup. Henningsen now up. First pitch a little high. That's a huge play over there in center by Pameran. Keeps the runner at first and keeps them from loading more bases up with the top of the order now up. Same pitch a little high. Four, ball number two, 2-0. Two Anorak's 2-0 pitch to Henningsen. Same spot, called another ball, 3-0. Do you have the green light here if you're Charlie Henningsen? I'd probably say no right about now. You're the leadoff hitter. You need that second guy into scoring position. We yeah. all know the unwritten rule of a 3-0 count, and he doesn't swing, and it's going to be called a strike, even though the catcher doesn't catch it. Right now, I think if you're Antoniak, stop going for those high pitches unless if you could get him on that third strike. On those third strikes, he's not calling him up there. Get him on that. Get him on those inside, outside corners. What, what Jaeger's been doing really well. That one's a high pop fly, shading into the outfield is Schneider, and he'll make the play for out number two. And now up to bat. The is Nikolai French. French. French flew out into center his last at bat in the first inning. He's got a runner on first to play with. And Anorak will check that runner. 
and he'll deliver the pitch to French. High and outside, ball one. French probably has the opportunity here to drive one out. Probably drive one out in the uh, left center gap. It's looking mighty open for him right now. Jaeger, I wouldn't probably think Antoniak's going to pick off Jaeger. That pitch straight down the gut for strike one. Got two outs, going to try to pipe it, pipe it down the middle and try to get try to overpower French. The 1-1 pitch. Check swing by French, and he goes strike two. Didn't want to swing at that, but chopped his bat. Runner on first gets his lead. Antoniak comes set, checks the runner. Delivers the pitch to French in the dirt, but a good stop behind the plate by Tanton. He threw it over to first. Can't get the runner, though. Tanton seems a bit shaky behind home plate right now. Had, had that error... In the, first, in the second inning that allowed one run to score in nearly a second if it wasn't for Levicki's absolute, an absolute dart from left field to gun down Hosey. That pitch, high ball, five ball into right field. Holscher coming in on it. He's going to make the play to retire the side. No runs, one walk, zero hits, zero, one runner left on base. We'll head to the top of the fourth when we come back here on the WTV Live Network. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. Harry Yeager out for his fourth inning of work, and he's been making quick and easy of these Monarch hitters, minus the one run he gave up in the second inning. And now due up for the Monarchs is 3-4-5, Apgar, Ingram, and Emig in the fourth inning. If you're Pap Papio La Vista here, the, these are the exact three guys you want up at the dish. Your middle of the order, probably the ones that can probably get the bet, get the hardest contact. And try to get, try to get Jaeger off the mound. Papio probably just needs to get more bat on the ball. Jaeger's done a great job of getting weak contact and getting strikeouts, paying the corners. Abgar up to bat now. He struck out in the first inning, looking to get into the box score with something other than a strikeout. Jaeger's pitch to lead off the inning, foul tip into the net, strike one. Jaeger has also been doing a good job of getting up in the count early, forcing the, these hitters on two strikes to swing at stuff they probably wouldn't want to swing at originally. There's another one that was down in the zone, but it's fouled off for strike two. Once again, Jaeger way ahead in the count. Jaeger's 0-2 pitch. Straight down the gut, strike three, called looking. And Tanner Apgar strikes out for the second time in this game. That one just blew straight by him. Yeah, there, nice pitch, nice 0-2 pitch by Jaeger. Got him with the, got him with the fastball, buckled him up. Just, just couldn't catch up to the fastball, and he goes down looking. Parker Ingram now up at the bat. Weak grounder straight back to the dugout. Jaeger working quickly here, about 15, about 15, 20 seconds in between each pitch, trying to speed up these Monarchs to get, get weak contact, and it's been working so far. The pitch, that one is outside, 1-1. One, one. The 1-1 one, one pitch to, from Jaeger to Ingram. That one bounces into the dish. Ball two. 
Ingram is a pretty, pretty good threat here. 267, eight hits on the year with a triple double. Pretty good RBI hitter. Weak contact over to short. Chandler tosses it over to Hufford at first and retires Ingram. Easy out there from Harry Yeager. Once again, that weak contact. Yep, we've been talking all about a weak contact here. That's their, that's Yeager's key to success against this stacked Monarchs team. Only have lost two games on the year so far against two good teams, Lincoln Southeast and Millard West, in their last game. Just trying to bounce back, but not looking too great right now against Yeager. Emig picks up the first strike there called. Last time he was up to bat, he laid down a sacrifice bunt, which ultimately led to that runner scoring. Yeah, you could see it in the coach's face. They are swinging at all the wrong pitches. They, they're they looking at curveballs, fastballs, a couple of cutters down, down in the zone, out on the outside, and they're letting, they're swinging at the... They're swinging at those same pitches just a little bit more outside, forcing weak contact into the middle of the infield or to the corners. Jaeger's 1-1 one -one pitch, little inside, called ball two. Jaeger looking for another 1-2-3 inning. That would be his third already in just the fourth inning if he can come up with it. It's a 2-1 pitch, down the gut, strike two, evens out the count. The 2-2 pitch from Jaeger to Emig. Little outside and low, full count now. I think it was the first time in the wild that Pap Papio have worked Jaeger full. I'd like to see how he can deal with this. Full count pitch from Jaeger to Emig. Swing and a oh miss, my. strike three. Gets him out on strikes. Another 1-2-3 inning for Harry Jaeger. No runs on no hits. And no runners left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth when we come back. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Trevor Emig will come back onto the mound for his fourth inning work as well. But unlike Harry Yeager, he's got a lot more pitches on the mound than Antoniak does. Yeah, Antoniak, I, we don't have a pitch counter up here, but he's probably 50, 40, 50 plus at this point. I think about out of the 10, 12 batters that Westside had, about more than more than half of them have worked him into a full count and probably more than five or six pitches, which will be huge here in Center these coming up other, coming up 40, innings Jack to, to see because this is a pitcher's duel right now, one run, one run each from both, and I'd like to see who would be the first to crack. Jack Scholes struck out his first time up. Looks to lay down a bunt, but it rolls foul. Bold move there by Coach Shields. Guess trying to get that fa fast jack to go try to leg out a bunt. But it's not a bad idea. This pitch, that one's straight down the gut. That's going to be strike two, 0 2 now to Jack Schultz. O2 pitch to Jack Schultz. From Antoniak. Barely outside, maybe a little bit high. Now it's 1 2. That pitch from Antoniak way outside. 2 2 now with a count. The 2 2 pitch fouled straight into the net by Shoals. 
Once again, we'll get a 2-2 pitch. Still keeping up the west side. Still keeping the high high pitch count going for Antoniak. I don't. We've been sit, I've been saying over and over again. They keep work. They're working the pitch count. That's one of the keys I talked about earlier in the game, and they're doing it greatly. That one's high into center. Pearman under it. Easy catch for out number one. He's been busy out there in center, including a really good play over in right center. Yeah, he's made two. He's made two great plays. Both. Had balls tail originally hit about middle Let's towards the center field, field gap. Four, center field Wayne. gap just kept turning, turning right. Made a nice running grab and then a big diving catch to keep keep an extra base hit from Lewis Hoffert and keep a crucial runner at first. That pitch. A little bit outside. 1-0. Now Antoniak's 1-0 pitch. Swung on into the gap, coming over, and that's not going to get over there in time to first. Emig was able to come up with the stop, but shading to his left or his right, there was no way he was going to be able to make that play at first. Yeah, Anglin there, nice speed. He is a running back, which does give him a little bit of extra training on the on the gridiron, but Take nice running. Got, it was a nice play there by Enoch, but... Just better speed from Anglom. And now up to bat is Marcus Chandler. That one's going to be high fly in the infield. The first baseman, Apgar, in on it for out number two in the fourth inning. Nice pitch there by Antoniak. That's the, those are the pitches he wants. He needs to get those high in the zones, and right there Chandler bit it. For the and Warriors, just the pop it way high in the air. Got really weak contact on that. Just a little, little fly ball to the first baseman. And now Trey Savoy up. One of only three west side hitters to have a hit. He had a single back in the second. Swings on the first pitch into the net. O one one count. Antoniak to Savoy. Runner on first is Nick Anglum. And that pitch is grounded oh. up the middle. Good stop by Antoniak, and he'll toss it over to Apgar to retire the side. One run, no walks, zero hits, one hit, sorry. One runner left on base. We'll head to the top of the fifth, and Harry Yeager out for his fifth inning of work. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. We're in the top of the fifth. Harry Yeager is also out for his fifth inning of work. He's had a heck of a day making light work of these Monarch batters. Low pitch count. He's got a lot more in the tank if you're Coach Seals. Yeah, I was a little bit Let's skeptical the before, before the game today. He only had two innings of work, five, six walks to three strikeouts. But he has impressed me today. Had gotten swings and misses like that with those off speed and gotten really weak contact only allowing two hits, and the only run that scored for the Monarchs was on that wild, two wild pitches in the second inning, plus a good sacrifice bunt. Levicki swings on two pitches in the dirt to start this inning, and all of a sudden he's down 0-2. Levicki struck out in the second, looking to not get struck out again, this time in the fifth. 
the 0-2 pitch from Jaeger to Levicki. Little high and inside, ball one. The one-two pitch from Jaeger. Swung on and missed in the dirt. Savoy will have to toss to first. And he does. Place a strikeout there. Six strikeouts on the day for Jaeger. I really he is punching out Monarchs left and right. Not really the strikeout guy, but has doubled his strikeouts the on the season in this game. Three three before this game, now six in this game. Now up to bat is Caden Sterling. Swings on the first pitch. Now in this inning, he's getting a lot of swings and misses. Still keeping that pitch count really low, about 10 pitches per inning. His command is really on point today, Hunter. His, his stuff is really working. That time it's a little outside, maybe a little low, ball one. Pitch from Jaeger, down the gut, hit into right field. Coming in on it is Anglum. Can he get there? Oh. Sliding grab, can't get it. Rounding first and jogging into second is Levicki. He'll slide in with a double. Nice, nice little blooper there by Levicki. Just got, just got enough of it there to bloop it down into right field. Nice, right nice hustle there by. Oh, that was Sterling with the hit. Not Levicki, excuse us. But it was nice hustle there by Anglum. Just could not make the play and a good backup by Chandler to hold that runner there at second. Get Not get him a triple, but a runner in scoring position. And one of the only times the Monarchs might have it today. Holsher foul tip into the glove of Savoy. Runner on second, Caden Sterling. Dangerous situation with one out for Harry Yeager on the mound. That pitch swung on and turned into the bleachers, gets around the net. 0-2 now, Brett Holscher in a deep hole. Yeager's 0-2 pitch to Holscher. We'll check on the runner at second. Checks again. Triple take. That pitch a little outside. One, two. Probably one of the biggest at-bats of the night here for the Monarchs. Just trying to get trying to get that runner probably over to third. And if a well-placed single could get him home to give the Monarchs a 2 nothing lead in the fifth. That fastball straight past the eyes of Holscher and he goes down on strikes. And now two outs. Very important out there for Harry Yeager. The catcher number 13, Ty Tanton. Ty Tanton the catcher up now for the Monarchs. He's got a chance to drive in a run with a runner over on second. Yeager's first pitch of the at bat. Gasses it straight oh into the bat, and that's going to be down the left field line, hooking foul, and out of play into the construction site. That one might have had the home run distance there. Just pulled it, just pulled it about ten feet foul. But a good first swing there by the by the nine hitter Tanton, who has been off to a slow start hitting wise. Constructional crew have a nice little surprise for them tomorrow morning when they come to work little souvenir there if it doesn't get picked up. But demolition starting on that school near the Blue Gym. Jaeger ahead in the count 0-2 after that pitch. Tanton trying to battle back. Jaeger's pitch to Tanton. Straight into center. Scholes comes in, goes back and makes the catch. And Tanton will line out to end the side. No runs in that inning as well, Hunter. And we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. 1-1 one, one game here at Westside.
Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. 1-1 one, one ball game here at West Side, tied up between the Monarchs and the Warriors. Leading things off in the bottom of the fifth will be Burke Brown out on left field. Right now we got a pitcher's duel between the Monarch hitter Antoniak and the West Side or the West Side pitcher Jaeger and the Monarch pitcher Antoniak. Overall, they've been playing really great pitching ball, and if you're into pitcher's duel, this is the game for you. If you're into hitting, maybe not, but it's always good to see good pitchers, a good pitcher's duel. Both have gone. Jaeger's gone five innings of work, keeping that pitch count still low, and I'm thinking if, if I'm the pat, if I'm Coach McCabe on the Monarchs, I might be able, if he gets in a little bit of trouble, probably runner in scoring position here, might have to pull him with the high pitch count with west side west side hitters getting them into full counts nothing warming up down the right field line at all right now so we'll see what the plan is for the monarchs depending on what happens here in the bottom of the fifth and there he is burke brown to lead things off bottom of the fifth and leading it off for the warriors left fielder number 16 burke brown burke will step into the box the pitch from antoniak Little high for ball one. The pitch from Antoniak to Burke Brown catches the outside corner. Brown didn't seem too pleased with that call. Little shrug of the head, but nonetheless called strike. It's 1-1. One, one. That one lined into right field. But Holscher's going to come in on it and make the play for out number one. Just hung up a little too long there. Nice contact there made by Brown. But one away er early and trying to keep that pitch count low in this inning is Antoniak. Next for the Warriors, number eight, Harry and now Yeager. Harry Yeager will step into the box to face his foe. Antoniak swings on the first pitch, comes up empty. Pitcher on pitcher battle, not not on the mound, but in the bo box and the mound actually. But it was, it's going to be interesting to see here what Antonia can do to Jaeger. Jaeger flies that one over the net, over the press box. Watch out for the cars. O2 now for Jaeger. The pitch from Antonia swung on. Pop fly over to short, hanging into the back is Schneider to make the play. Two outs now early for Antoniak here in the bottom of the fifth. And now the bottom of the order, Lewis Hoffert up for the Warriors. Antoniak making quick work of these west side hitters to start this fifth inning. And his first pitch there is outside for ball number one. The pitch from Antoniak outside once again. Now Hofford is up 2 0. Hoffert to receive the 2 0 pitch. That one's going to be at the knees for a called strike. It's 2-1. The 2-1 pitch over to the tennis courts over the net. Hopefully that didn't hit a tennis player. Hopefully it did not. But I think there is actually another net behind this net to block the tennis courts and even the cars behind us. There is actually one big giant net that protects the tennis courts as that one is going to hit the net. Smart planning by the West Side Warriors the way they made this field to just add a bunch of nets. Makes it easy to track down those foul balls too. They didn't really give them a net next to the classroom windows. That one lined in the center. Pearman will go back, catch the ball for out number three. No runs, no hits, no runners left on base. We'll head to the top of the six. It's still 1-1.
Welcome back here in the WTV Live Network. We're only an hour and 13 minutes into this baseball game, and we're already in the top of the sixth. And now the Monarchs are due up. And once again, it looks like a familiar face out on the mound. That's Harry Yeager. Five clean innings of work. One, one unearned. I believe it's it's rather earned or unearned, but I think it's unearned. But if you're Pavio La Vista here, you got the top of the lineup. One, two, three with the leadoff hitter Hammeran, who's got plus 400 average and try, trying to get on base, and especially with two lefties up here. Get some nice, get some strong contact, try to get one down the line. 0-1 oh now for the leadoff, Pameran. Jaeger to deal the pitch. Oh. High fly ball deep in right field. Englum is going back. He gets under it, still going back, just short of the warning track. He makes the grab. That ball just kept carrying and carrying and carrying. Near I think it put Anglin back maybe a step or two short of the warning track there. Maybe hit like 320 feet, but it, it was Number doomed to fail. With it. it might have been able to hit off the wall there with some wind, but no, like you said earlier, no wind. Nice sunny day out here. And it should be a nice, it is a beautiful day for baseball. That first pitch from Jaeger is a ball to Easton Schneider, who showed bunt. We'll see if he shows Bunt again here. 1-0. Line to second. Schneider comes in on it. Tosses it over. Good play by Marcus Chandler. Nice, easy, routine play. Marcus Chandler still continuing that good season. Struggling early, though, in the batter's box. Number 23, Tanner Apgar. Now Tanner Apgar. We'll step in. Abgar, the three-hole hitter. Jaeger pumps that one in. Off speed, catches the inside corner. Ball, strike one. Jaeger still, still pitching as he did in that first inning. Catching the corners, forcing the Monarchs to swing. He's got a bit of an extended zone here with his outside with his outside pitching style, he's getting more of those calls than Antoniak does with those high fastballs. That one can't quite get to the plate. Ball two, it's 2-1. Two, Batter Apgar. Harry Yeager making good work of these Papio La Vista batters. And that pitch over into the second base, third base gap. And a two-out single for Tanner Apgar. Got the best contact that Papio La Vista had all day. Just got a, ni got a nice pitch down the middle. Got a, just enough on that to get past the diving glove of Henningsen. Number 10, Parker and put a, put a nice routine single out into left field. Get a big two-out base runner. And we have a pinch runner, it looks like. It will be number six. It's going to be Watterson, who's going to be... The pinch runner. Pinch running will be number six, Gavin Watterson. Gavin Watterson on to pinch run for the Monarchs. And you think he might be able to be a stealing threat. With two outs, you ultimately got to think might be a good play for the Monarchs to possibly put a runner in scoring position coming into the closing innings of this game. With two outs now, the clean-up hitter, Parker Ingram, steps into the box. And that one's hit into center field. Going back is Schultz. Oh. Can he get under one? Calls he it can. off and retires the side. Schultz is inevitable on center. He, may, he can make plays go, coming in, going out to the left, to the right. He's fast, and he can patrol center greatly. That's one hit. No runs. One runner left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the six. Well, Guess what, Hunter? Up, it's still 1-1. One, one.
Welcome back here to Westside High School, the Warrior Field. Westside tied up with the number three team in the state, Papua La Vista at one, heading into the bottom of the sixth. And now stepping into the box is number five, the top of the order, Charlie Henningsen. Westside looking to get some runs going across the plate. Runners on the base pads with the top of the order. First pitch to Henningsen, lined out into right field. Horsher coming on on it will make the play for out number one on the first pitch. West side right near probably needs to start off with a base runner here. Top of the order, Nicola French up next, due up next. He could be the one that can get on base here. Gets Third a, baseman number can, 17, Nicola probably, French. Probably can get one out into the gap here if he can pick his pitches correctly. And it looks like we will have some work down in the Papio bullpen. Apgar doing so far pretty good, but his pitch count is really getting up there, Hunter. Nikolai French in the batter's box right now. He's 0 for 2 with two flyouts into the outfield, one to center, one to right. Looking to get in the box score with a hit. The 1-0 pitch swung on a miss, and it's 1-1. Only six total hits between both of these teams here today. The 1-1 pitch from Apgar. Outside, ball two. Yeah, it's still six between six combined hits, just as you said. Four for the Monarchs, two for the Warriors. And after what after Westside showed yesterday, 12 runs allowed nine. Oh, that one might get down. Into the right field. And it's it's gonna get down, down the line. French up to second. And he's going to walk in with a stand-up double with one out. And that is a big double. Found, found the perfect gap way over the head of the first baseman, right down the line between the right fielder and the first baseman. And now Jack Schultz comes into the box, who's also over two going into this hit, or in this inning. So he'll look to get onto the box score as well, just like French, and maybe draw on a run with French over at second. It would be a big run here in the bottom of the sixth. High school games, only seven innings. So it would be a big, it would be big here if Schultz can get that run in. Made a nice, made a nice catch in center field, taking back and see if he can, he saved a run. Now let's see if he can get a run on the board for West Side. 1-0 now to the count to Nicola French, the future Jackrabbit up in South Dakota State. The pitch from Apgar. Thin ice so far. That pitch barely misses. It's 2-0. And now the bullpen is moving faster and faster down their right field line. Apgar got that running and score, runner in scoring position right now at second. Nicola French. Jack Scholes up to bat right now. He's ahead in the count 2-0. And the pitch from Anorak. Is in the zone for strike one. It's 2 1. French in a hitter's count, 2 1. Apgar checks back for French at second. And he's going to go back after Apgar turns around. The, the bullpen energy right now for Westside is definitely ramping up. We're bringing a lot more chance. A lot more shouts of words, random words. As that pitch swung on a miss, strike two, evens out the count at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, still no activity up in the west side bullpen. They trust their starter to go the distance here. Their bullpen has been a bit iffy at times. Blew a couple of games. It was especially bad. I went to the Elkhorn when they played the Elkhorn Antlers. Was They had... Went a no hitter through six, seven and six and a third. We're up two to nothing. Gave up three three runs, two unearned to lose the game. As that's a high fly ball into center field, Pamerian coming in on it. Not deep enough. We'll squeeze it for out number two, and the runner stays at second. So a fly out for Jack Scholes the center, his second one of the game, and now Nick Englum the cleanup hitter who's one for one with a walk back in the second inning, looks to drive in French, who's at second. Right Angle up here, probably, probably the best all-around hitter. Has some power, 
and has some contact as we are going to get a mound visit here from Coach McCabe. And, and a pitching change. And we will have a pitching change here to face the cleanup hitter Anglom. They do not they do not want a lefty in on the righty. So they will t take out a great, great start for the pitcher Antoniak going five and two thirds with one with one run, zero unearned runs, zero earned runs, one run, allowing just three hits, but is responsible for that runner at, at second base. So we'll tell you about the pitcher when we come back here on the WTV Live Network, and Nick Anglum looks to drive in a run and take the lead. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. The Monarchs make a pitching change to Braden Koenig, who steps on the mound. Hunter, tell us about him. Braden Koenig's only his fourth appearance so far. No wins, no losses. Zero ERA. Uh, two hits, one walk, and three strikeouts on him so far. He's only faced 13 batters so far, though. So, so he's going to try to shut down the... Try shut down the Warriors here, trying to not get, try not get Antoniak that runner at second to score, and keep this game at one to go to the final inning. So and French will march back to second, take his spot, and Nick Anglin will walk back into the batter's box. He's got a chance for a big hit here, and potentially drive in a run and take the lead. Yeah, if you're Anglin here, it, it's difficult to face a new pitcher after. You fit after a pitching change. It's really tough, but if he can get if he can get one a well placed single, probably one out into center field, or maybe even in right field. I would if I were Coach Seals, I probably wouldn't send French if it was hit over into left field with Levicki there. Levicki already darted somebody out. Braden Hosey. Braden Hosey got nabbed in the second, which would have given the Warriors a lead off of a error by the catcher and that pitch is outside sliding over his tantan to make the stop Koning's pitch as he gets set fairly big lead for French over at second Anglin will take the pitch high for ball two if Anglin can find a way on base that would bring up Marcus Chandler who struggled today He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. But That's still a good hitter, though, to have up. Yeah, good, good, a good hit here for the young career of Marcus Chandler. But right now we need to see what this, what Anglum does here is he fouls this one over the press box. So that will be strike 1, 2, 1 for the count and the batter, Nick Anglum. Koning getting ready for the 2, 1 pitch off the rubber. Checks French at second. Delivers the pitch to Anglum. He lays off of it, little low for ball three. Good discipline there. That was a tough pitch to lay off. That's what we call a big league take there. It was a nice cutter that just dipped below the zone, but a way to lay off it there by Nick Anglum. That pitch is in on the hands for ball four. He draws a walk, and now Marcus Chandler will step into the box. This is not a total loss if you're Papillion here. It now forces, it will now Second bring in a force out here. Marcus Chandler. The fr freshman Chandler is up. 
Englom at first, French at second. Had a great season so far today, this season, Hunter, but he's also 0 for 2 with a flyout on the infield and a strikeout back in the second. And that time he lays off that pitch who's outside for ball one. Chandler, I think in this at-bat, just needs to stay disciplined here. Can't get anything weak, weak here, just tries to bloop one probably or just absolutely bomb one. Papio has four outs at first, second, and third with that walk earlier to Anglum. But Anglum at first, French at second. In the batter's box is Marcus Chandler. On the mound is Koning. And he'll get set for the 2-0 pitch. That one's hit and run is on, but it's fouled back towards the tennis courts. It's 2-1 now. Honestly, a good decision there by Coach Shields. If you're gonna if you're gonna get a hit, get a single, French would automatically be scoring there. And if it was in the gap, it probably would have been a two bagger, two RBI. So a good decision there by Shields. Didn't work out though with with two outs there. That pitch is low for ball three. And now heading the count is Marcus Chandler, 3-1. If he can draw the walk here, that'll bring up Trey Savoy, who is one for two with a hit back in the second inning. Big pitch here by, by Koenig. Koenig's pitch, high for ball four, and Marcus Chandler will trot down to first. And the bases are loaded with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. What a big spot for the junior transfer, Trey Savoy. Yeah, bases loaded for the first time probably tonight. This is bases loaded situation, and Conan in a bit of a pickle here. Still has two outs, which is big, but his from his first few pitches, control has been a big issue and probably would need to start, start Savoy here with a strike to try to get get some weak contact, get get something here to get out of the bases loaded jam. As that pitch is fouled straight back, light contact by Savoy, he's down in the count 0-1. Exactly like that. Bases loaded, runners will take their lead. Koning will check them, delivers the pitch, in the dirt, good stop by Tanton to potentially save a run if that one to get back to the backstop. Blocking balls in the dirt is very, it's a very underrated part of the game for the catching position. It's it saves more runs than people would think, as it will keep French there at third. That pitch is high, opposite of the last pitch. It's two one. Cannot put another runner on the bag. There's no free bases. Driving a run. Yeah, his control issue. He has probably a control issue a little bit so far. This next pitch might dictate the at bat. He can rather go down three and one, get a two two count. And that one, there it is, two two count. That one is in on the numbers for strike two. Big pitch here from Braden Koenig. I'm just about to say, big strike there by Koenig as we have some more activity down in the Papio bullpen. You can't see the number from here, but. Still a 2-2 count on the, on the six hitter. And that pitch is in, and we got a loaded count. Loaded bases, two outs. And what a spot to be in here for Koning. Tapio wanted to strike there, did not get the call. Full count here, runners will be in motion. So this is probably the biggest pitch of the night here for Papio and for Westside. The bench up in arms. Koning's pitch is fouled back and we'll do it all over again, Hunter. Man, this is exciting. This is the best, best part of the game so far. Huge spot in this game for Braden Koning who just came in. Especially in the bottom of the sixth here. Trey Savoy in the batter's box. Full count, bases loaded, two outs. Koning comes set, he delivers the pitch and, and he him. hits him. Ball f hits him. And a 2-1 lead for the West Side Warriors. Their first lead of the night in a big one in the bottom of the six. Still bases loaded for, for the next hitter, which will be Burke Brown. And we will have courtesy runner. It will be Hosey. Once again, Braden Hosey was gunned out by Levicki and left. But this time he's got two runners in front of him. 
Runners move up by the hit by pitch, and Burke Brown, the junior, steps into the box. Big chance for him to put his name in the stat sheet, drive in some runs. But if you gotta be Burke Brown, you gotta think he loves just taking those pitches he doesn't like, and with the control so far by Koning. And that'll, that, you don't even need to say that anymore, Zach. That is Koning's day. He's gonna. He's Koning gonna, did not record an out. Zero. Zero innings pitch, 0.0 innings pitch, two walks, I believe two or three walks, zero earned runs, but is responsible for all three runners at third. But that with the walk that brung in French, Antoniak will be charged with the run. And it looks like the pitcher that will be coming on will be... Number 16, Austin Fort for the Monarchs. Austin Fort will be coming... Yeah, you are right, it is Austin Fort. Record of 1-0, and oh, four appearances. Uh, four, four and a third innings pitch, only allowed one hit. Ooh, four walks to two strikeouts. That might not be good for the situation here, but a lefty might do some good. They're bringing in a lefty against the right-handed hitter, Brown. Burke Brown has got a great shot here to extend this 2-1 lead for the Warriors. We were just talking about Hunter. If I believe I said it right, it was an hour and 13 minutes coming into this inning. And now we've had about a 20 minute inning here. After this, base is loaded. One run so far inning for the Warriors. And Burke Brown checking a look at his, what the pitcher he'll face Austin Fort is doing. The, the lefty is the big, big thing to talk about here. Honestly, if you're Burke Brown here, the pressure is all off right now. Excuse me, you got the lead here, two to one. You still got the bases loaded. And all you're looking for is to just get, rather take your pitches or just get, take a big hack at it, try to get one out into the gap, maybe a good single, get some insurance runs here to try to get you up by more than a run here, which has been the biggest lead for both, for Papio and Westside. Burke Brown steps into the box. He faces Awesome Fort, and Offense, Offense Fort's first pitch is in the dirt. Another great stop by Tanton behind the dish. So first, kind of a wild pitch there from Awesome Fort. Good dig behind the plate, and the 1-0 pitch to Burke Brown. And that one swung on straight into center. Going back is Pameran, and he's going to make the catch. And a big out there. And retire the side. But nonetheless, the Warriors put up one run, and they're up 2-1, heading in to the very last inning, yeah, top of the seventh. Welcome back here on the WTV Live Network. And guess who it is, Hunter? Harry Yeager back on the mound. An opportunity to complete a full game while giving up just what is so far four hits. If he can get three outs here, he throws that clean game, full, full state, all seven innings. But to do it, he's going to have to face some really good Papio hitters. Five, six, seven will be due up Alex Emig, Trent Levicki, and Caden Sterling starting things off. Alex Emig, who is 0 for 1 with a sacrifice back in the second and a strikeout in the fourth. Yeah, this is not going to be a, this is not going to be an easy team to strike to get out one two three. But if anybody can do it, it's Jaeger right now. Started out the game only pitching two innings. Now it's looking for the complete game. I would say shut out, but. Papio did put up one in the second off of two wild pitches and a sack bunt. But right now is the Jaeger show. And see if he can probably get that, get those coveted three outs and probably save the Warrior bullpen. Be huge too. If you ask Coach Seals, I guarantee he'll agree. Harry Jaeger's first pitch draws a foul ball. There you are, Coach Seals. Good stop. There you go. Put him, put him over there at first base. He might be able to walk something. Love to see the 
Coach is getting in on some action. Yeah. Still got it in him. Harry Yeager's 0-1 pitch outside, ball one. Not a ton of pressure here if you're Harry Yeager, though. Obviously, you don't want to give up that run, but right now, base is empty, zero outs. Kind of just keep your work up, continue what you're doing on the mound, and there it is. Swing and a miss, strike two, one, two count. Yeah, if you're Yeager right now, your pitch count relatively through seven innings right now is really low right now. He's gotten a lot of three pitch outs, four pitch outs, even a few one or two pitch outs. Nobody in the bullpen right now for the Warriors as he can just get, can paint that outside corner, force the Monarchs to swing since the umpire has been calling that all day, force some weak contact on the right, on the left side of the infield. That was weak contact, barely got a piece of it was Alex Emig and he's down in the count, oh, one, two, Jaeger's pitch. Almost got him there, but he fouls it off his leg, and we'll do it all over again at 1-2. Harry Yeager, potentially seven strikes away from a complete game. Yeager gets set, delivers to Emig, fouled back over the press box towards the tennis courts. And Hunter, we're gonna do it all over again at one, two. Emig right now doing great with the pitch, doing great with the pitch count here. Just trying to drive it up for Jaeger. But he just needs to get, just needs to get one that will be the base hit that the Monarchs need right now. And that is not it. Emig down on strikes. And Harry Jaeger is now two outs from a clean, from a, complete game but this time he's got to go through Trent Levicki who is over two with two strikeouts Harry Yeager six strikes away from the complete game on his resume Levicki steps into the box the first pitch straight to third base French steps in front of it doesn't come up with it tossed to first in time big play one out away, Harry Yeager. Right now, Yeager putting on the be best start of the year so far, probably for the entire West Side team. This is the number three team in the state, people. This is a really good offense. And this isn't West Side's ace pitcher either. This is no. somebody who hadn't even started a game coming into it, and he is now one out away from throwing a complete game with only four hits allowed against the number three team in the state. But oh. that one hit him and he'll take his base. So now the batter that he has to come up with is Brett Holscher, the eight-hole hitter. Honestly, if you're Jaeger right here, you are in a perfect prime position. You have six and a two-third innings down, need one more batter, and you have the eight-hitter and the nine-hitter up. As we will have a pinch runner, it'll be, it'll be Aiden Vodica, going to be the new pinch runner on first. And if you're Coach McCabe right now, probably putting on the sign for the steal. Got to get that runner in scoring position. Down by one. Definitely a high potential here. You're right there, Hunter. But Harry Yeager, one out away from a complete game against the number three team in the state. The first pitch to Holscher. Oh, he's going. Runner goes. Yep. And Savoy can't come up with it clean on his pop. And now a runner in scoring position, a little bit more pressure on Harry Yeager. It's only baseball, but one one walk, one hit by pitch in this case can cause a big chain reaction here, which might be able to doom Yeager. Yeager's pitch straight down the gut, draws the swing and a miss, evens out the count at 1-1. A little bit of confidence shown there on the mound. Harry Yeager really liked that pitch. So did the catcher Savoy. Two strikes away from the complete game. The pitch. Oh, got him on the corner. Yep. Catches the corner, and we're one strike away. Harry Yeager from a complete game. Holscher down in the count. One, two. Harry Yeager on the mound. One strike away from his complete game. Checks the runner at second, and the pitch in on the hands 
Ball two evens out the count at 2-2. Two -two. Down to their last out, last strike are the Monarchs. Runner in scoring position at second. Jaeger's pitch, swung on and missed. Harry Jaeger throws a complete game against the number three team in the state. How do you do, Harry Jaeger? What a performance. What a performance indeed, and the players on West Side know it. The first start of the year for Harry Jaeger does one run of work in the second inning. His offense comes in the comes through in the sixth to get him that one run that he needs. Gets gets the win, and will only will probably be charged that run. But four, Monarchs finish the game with one run on four hits, one error. And then the Warriors will get two runs, three hits. Got some big walks there at the on the sixth inning. We'll finish with three hits. But three hits is enough for Harry Yeager as he gets the gets a big complete game shutout. Or not complete game shutout, a complete game. Either way, it works for him. What a performance by the junior Harry Yeager. Tosses a complete game against the number three team in the state, Papio La Vista. And Westside is now and back-to-back -back wins against top three teams in the state, Bellevue West last night, and now Papia La Vista. Huge shout-out to Harry Yeager for his complete game. Thank you for joining us on the WTV Live Network. Hunter Velapek, I'm Zach Kastrick. The entire WTV Live crew, thank you for tuning in. Have a good night, everyone.